This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over manual therapy techniques, specifically instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are a licensed medical professional with instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization within your scope of practice. Now, there's some gray area here. Not every state has legislation around these tools. If you're not sure, check. I would hate to see somebody getting in trouble because they watched one of our videos and used it on a patient or client when things did not fall within their scope of practice act. Now, these tools, just like all of our other techniques, fall within a model of practice, and we are very big on assess, address, reassess. So even though these tools are specific to perhaps fascial tissue, we're still going to base their use on reliable assessments, we're gonna use these techniques, and then we're gonna reassess, and if they're not effective, we're not gonna use them again for that particular patient or problem. In this video, we're gonna do IASTM, Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Mobilization for the thoracolumbar fascia of the low back. I'm gonna have my friend Lisa come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate. Now, if we're talking about how I do rehab, I'm always going after some sort of change in an objective measure, some sort of change I can note in a movement assessment, because I know that if I improve the quality of movement, somebody's symptoms will get better. I'm not one to chase diagnoses. I'm not one to chase pain. I know a lot of people use what I'm about to show you just for low back pain in general. I wouldn't suggest that. But if low back pain leads to impairments, great. Just make sure you're assessing. Now, with that being said, since I know these two things can be tied, low back pain and what I'm about to show you, we need to talk about position. My preferred position for this technique is in child's pose so that we have a little tension on the thoracolumbar fascia. IASTM techniques work a lot better when there's a little tension in the fascial tissue so that you can actually grab some tissue. If it's slack, you just kind of like run the tool through and you get no purchase on any fascial layer. Now, sometimes for low back pain patients, child's pose isn't an easy position to get into. Or somebody has knee issues and child's pose is an easy position to get into. So one modification that I will often use is I'll just have somebody like Lisa, let's say she, she had some, some pretty rough low back pain. All right, well, I'll be like, do you think you could, you could do one of these for me? Like just kind of rest down on your elbows? And since we're gonna be there a little bit, I'll even make it a little easier for her by putting a pillow to support some of her torso. Now I have some of that flexion that I need here to get some tension and I can do my IASTM techniques. Now, if that didn't work, I'd probably put her in sitting. That's not ideal for me, because now I'm behind her, and obviously my biomechanics are not great. What I would try to stay away from, guys, with this, although if you have to, you have to, is supine on a table. I find that supine puts people into extension. All of a sudden, there's a lot of slack in the tissue, and again, it's really hard to get purchase on any of the fascia to try to do any of this shear force that we think we're affecting. So I'm gonna have Lisa go ahead and get up on the table in child's pose because her low back pain certainly isn't irritable. She volunteered for videos today. She's in good health. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull her shirt up right, and I'm just gonna tuck it underneath her sports bra All right, so it stays out of our way. Good. Right, and so you guys can imagine the thoracolumbar fascia is the origin of the latissimus dorsi. So it's, it's gonna go up this way, right? It actually connects all the way into the lower traps, right? So we're up into the thoracic spine here. And then as far as how low we're gonna go, if I find her pelvic crest, right? And I just put her pants right up against her pelvic crest. Now I have a good little border for the area that I should probably scan and treat any dysfunctional tissue in. So we're gonna use the same protocol we've been using for all of our techniques. A Little bit of cream to make sure that we don't abrade the skin. Remember our goal is to affect the layers of fascial tissue. In fact, there's a study that shows low back pain results in a reduction in shear between layers of the thoracolumbar fascia in low back pain patients. Really interesting stuff. The thoracolumbar fascia is actually probably the most well-researched fascial tissue. So I'll try to lay out some facts here as we go through this, but I'm just rubbing in that, that cream. Again, I know some people get all 
bent out of shape about how much cream they use. It doesn't matter that much. You might make a bit of a mess, but it's okay. You can wipe it off with a towel pretty easy, or you can just moisturize the other side of Lisa's back here. Lisa, you mind if I moisturize the other side of your back too? Okay. Yeah, she doesn't mind. All right. So as I'm going through here, I could also just kind of use my palpation skills to notice any areas that I thought were a little bit more dense or maybe not dense, right? We know that we get atrophy of the multifidi and the erector spinae around areas of dysfunction like herni herniations. Maybe I'll note some of that with my hands. All right. Then once I get all of that, that nice and rubbed in and the, the skin is lubricated, now I can use my scanning strokes and I'm going to start at her posterior iliac spine here and just kind of work my way up her, really her erector kind of bump here. See if I notice anything unusual. Like I do notice like right here, I can feel like a little bit more bumpiness in the tissue. So I'm gonna take note of that. I'm just scanning through 20 degree angle on the tool, pulling through the tissue. Let's do the other side, compare sides a little bit. Again, scanning through the tissue. Noting any differences, kind of using kind of a lawnmower sort of pattern, right? One strip of skin at a time. I can go back down this way if I wasn't totally sure. And yeah, I'm get, definitely getting a lot more in here. All right, so I'm getting a lot more tissue texture, right? A difference, something that's not uniform kind of in this area. So now we're going to use those multiple direction strokes to try to unbind these tissues and get some shear back between tissue layers. And there are a lot of layers. There's actually like four layers to the thoracolumbar fascia. Right, so your thoracolumbar fascia has a superficial posterior lamina, it has a deep posterior lamina, it has a middle layer and an anterior layer. You know, I think up till the middle layer, we're probably affecting a little bit with these tools. So that's something to think about. And if you guys look up the work of Vleeming, you can actually see how complex the direction of all of those layers is. It's, it's really interesting stuff. Now, all we need to know is that the layers don't necessarily follow the erector spinae. It's not straight up and down. And disorderly collagen binding isn't going to be in any one direction either. So again, I'm going to try to go in a bunch of different directions. Generally, I, I do six. I don't know where I got that from, but I'll go up, down, and then I'll do down arch this way, up arch this way, and then come from the other side and do the same thing. All right, so that gives me kind of like six angles. I think that's probably a pretty good way to get a lot of angles going. I usually do three to six strokes in each direction. Right, and I'm, I, that's just based on the amount of redness I get. I think if you go much past three to six strokes, which if you think about it, we just do our math, that's 18 to 36 strokes in one area. That's a lot of therapy actually. Definitely doesn't take very long. All right. She's getting pretty red already. I'm even getting a little bit of that petechiae. You guys have probably heard that term before, but that's a little redness that like looks like a hickey or like a rug burn. Right? Where we know we've, we've broken up some capillary beds a little bit. Now I can go ahead and do the other side. All right, start with these strokes and then these strokes. These strokes. stuff. Right. And again, she's getting pretty red here. Just double check the rest of this tissue. All right, so I got those. Now let's say I found a trigger point. Let's say that I found a trigger point in her erector spinae. We know that's pretty common. And I, during my static manual release techniques, I noticed it. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to break up any adhesion that's been caused around that trigger point. I have found a little improvement in carryover. So now our protocol so far 
is scan, disrupt any areas of non-uniformity with those multi-directional strokes. Then we're going to attack these trigger points by going in all directions around the trigger point in kind of like a cross friction massage sort of way. And then of course the way to finish off any of these ISTM techniques is probably with some sort of like pin and stretch technique. Now that is pretty tough in the low back. What we probably have to do is either have her start a little, a little up, pin the technique down, right? Now go ahead and reach forward for me all the way into like a lat stretch. All right, good. Right, we get a little bit of tension developed here. Right, so come up a little bit. All right, pin and then reach out for me. And then if I was doing this side, I wanted to get a little bit more, I'm actually gonna have you reach this towards the end of the table. Okay, all right, so back up again. All right, last one and reach. Good stuff. All right, let's do the other side a little bit. All right, same thing pin some tissue, right? So I'm just grabbing some tissue, holding, and then reach. Good. And she started with the side reach. She likes, she likes to get intense quick. Kettlebell champ. She likes intense workouts. All right, go ahead and reach. Good stuff. All right, let's keep, let's keep going to that opposite side since you started that way. And one more. And this is a really intense technique like I'm kind of repeating myself now but you know I wouldn't do much more than three to five of those pin and stretch strokes all right guys so the next thing I'll show you is a close-up recap so you get a good look at some of the redness that appeared and how some of that technique looks close up all right guys for a close-up recap I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this smart tools cream here of course there's a lot of different creams out there guys use what's comfortable for you. And I'm going to go through and make sure the skin's well lubricated. I'm going to take this chance to kind of feel through and use my palpation skills to get as much information as I can about what's going on. Do I feel like some atrophy or maybe some hypertrophy on only one side? Do I feel any denseness in the tissue, any trigger points? Right, this is all information I'm keeping track of, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this scanner tool. Right, the scanner tool is single bevel, pretty sharp, and I'm going to go ahead and go from posterior iliac spine all the way up into the thoracic spine. Right, my thoracolumbar fascia comes up like this. It right, goes all the way up and inserts into the lower trapezius, actually. So if I go this way. Just kind of pull through the tissue. I'm going to note any sort of dysfunction. And as I kind of mentioned in the further away shot, she's got a little bit more dysfunction in here. And I felt something right there. And the superficial lamina of the thoracolumbar fascia is actually partly created by the superficial fascia of the latissimus dorsi. So if you wanted to go out this way a little bit, you could. I did feel a little bit of something right there. All right, same thing. You guys can see I just have like a mowing the lawn pattern. Just taking one strip of tissue at a time. And all I'm doing right now is kind of making notes of things I want to go back over with my multi-directional strokes. So I say here and then maybe here. Now the two tools that seem to work best for me on the low back are this tool, the battering tool or the shark tool. I tend to want a convex edge for the low back. I find the concave edges, it's a little hard to not end up hitting the spinous process, to not end up hitting some of the bony protuberances. All right, so all I'm gonna do guys is my multi-directional strokes. So you can see here, I'm gonna start Fulcrum, pivot, fulcrum, pivot. That's one direction. Fulcrum, pivot, fulcrum, pivot. That's the other direction. Fulcrum, pivot, fulcrum, pivot. Fulcrum, pivot, fulcrum, pivot. And then I'll go up, down. 
And it doesn't really matter what order you do things in. Remember this tissue, the thoracolumbar fascia in particular has a very complicated fiber arrangement with multiple layers moving in various different directions. And then the binding between layers happens with disorderly collagen kind of binding in all sorts of different directions. So we don't need to necessarily worry about only going up or only going down. All right, we're just going to kind of go in a bunch of different directions here. You guys can see a little redness coming on there. This, of course, is the second time I'm going over this part of her low back, so I'm going to leave this alone. If I did it here again, three, four, five, six, you can see I'm about a 30 degree angle. I'm just going through my different strokes. Notice that redness coming in, that's that histamine response. Now the redness is not necessarily therapeutic. I don't actually think that like petechiae and the histamine response really have much to do with the effect we get. I think it's a lot more of, if you guys look up the Schleep model, you know, fascia response to tissue manipulation. I think that is a much better exp explanation of what's happening. I think the histamine response and some of the petechiae is more coincidental, having to do with increased inflammation at one point that led to some of the tissue stuff that we're feeling. Now, of course, the last thing we need to do, or I'm sorry, the two last things we need to do is go after any trigger points, break those puppies up. Say this was a trigger point, I just do one of these things, right? Do some cross friction all the way around, really try to break up any adhesive tissue that had been created by that trigger point. And then always remember to get a little bit of that dynamic instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization in to really get some change in how these layers move. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Lisa go ahead and kind of arch up a little bit for me here. And she, she actually just kind of pushed up from this position, like she did a McKenzie press up almost. Now I'm going to pin down the tissue, right? Right where she had that dysfunction. So right where she had the dysfunction, I'm pinning down. And now what I'm going to have her do is reach out into a lat stretch and then side bend away from the tool. Good. All right. And that is a pretty intense technique. So we're going to do it again. But we're only going to do it like three to five times. All right. Do it again, especially on the first session. After the first session, let's reassess. Let's find out how much of a response we got. Let's see how she feels the next day. Let's do that one more time. Good. And reach. All right, guys, remember, this is not just a low back pain technique. We're trying to change mobility. I would say that the most reliable assessment here is probably rotation. I think we can get see the biggest changes in rotation, especially if somebody is restricted in rotation after we try this technique. You want to try the other side? Go ahead and go up and stretch over. Good. Back up, back over. There is reason to believe that if somebody was really irritable with low back pain, it was really generalized. They had that like band of pain this way. Go ahead and do it again. This may not be something we want to do. A lot of the receptors in the thoracolumbar fascia, I know we see a lot of talk about receptors in fascial tissue. A lot of them in the thoracolumbar fascia are actually pain receptors. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. We might not want to attack this stuff in somebody who is very irritable. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll give the technique a try. Instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization is a wonderful amendment to an integrated program. And I think you guys will get some great carryover from session to session. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments box below. So there you have it, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Make sure to assess, address using the intervention, and then of course reassess. And if you get the chance, these videos are not a replacement for live education. Of course, if you get the chance, you should take live workshops or find a mentor who's experienced using these tools or maybe a friend that wants to learn them too. So at least you can practice on each other and give each other some tactile feedback of what you feel, how you felt the next day, what results you felt that you got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your questions below.